নিজেকে সমর্পণ করেন ঠিক সেই মতোই আজ আমরা মহামান্যকে আমাদের মাঝে পেয়ে ধন্য হয়ে গেছি মহামান্য নৈশীয়র জন্য আমাদের প্রার্থনা করা একান্ত রাষ্ট্রদূত হিসেবে তার দায়িত্ব পালন করতে সক্ষম হন আসুন আমরা রাজ্যের জনগণ এবং কর্মকর্তাদের সাথে সুসম্পর্ক বজায় রাখার জন্য ওনার সমস্ত প্রচেষ্টার জন্য আমাদের প্রার্থনাপূর্ণ সমর্থন জানাই He was nuncio to Israel and to Cyprus as well as apostolic delegate to Jerusalem and Palestine from 2017 to 2021. He has worked in the diplomatic service.
Amen. Peace be with you. And with our spirit. Dear brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the safety mysteries. To Almighty God and to my brothers and sisters, that I have already seen in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my mouth, through my thoughts, through my most gracious heart. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary and the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to God our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
আমাদের ভালোবেসেছেন যার জন্য আমরা ঈশ্বর সন্তান বলে অভিহিত আর আমরা তো সত্যি তাই সংসার যে আমাদের চেনে না তার কারণ পরমেশ্বরকে সে চিনতে পারেনি Heavenly Father Justin Anto, Parish Priest of Holy Cross Church, Silcha, uh, Reverend Fathers here present, Reverend Sisters, and you, all of you, dear friends, brothers and sisters, in our Lord Jesus Christ. I am truly glad to be present in the Holy Cross School grounds in Silcha and celebrate the Holy Mass with you this morning. The Holy Cross Parish was erected in the year 1953. And today, the parish conducts a number of activities for the lay faithful. And I wish to congratulate you for your commitment in uh, listening uh, the gospel of Jesus Christ in your life with your words, but especially with your deeds and your activities in the parish and uh, also in the city of Silcha. The liturgy of this season of Advent is filled with constant references to the joyful expectation of the Messiah and thus to understand, help us to understand the fullness of the value of, and meaning of the mystery of Christmas. In fact, our whole life should be an advent, a vigilant expectation of the Lord's final coming. Dear brothers and sisters, let us prepare our hearts to receive the Lord with an attitude of trusting prayer and faithful obedience. Let us keep alive our expectation of Christ who will come to visit us with his salvation, fully establishing his kingdom of justice and peace. The first reading taken from the Acts of the Apostles in today's liturgy concerns the very vital period of Christian history, namely the earliest faith events that took place after the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, when Christian ideas and beliefs were being formulated and when the organization of the church was, was getting developed. In a particular way, it describes the pastoral activities of St. Paul, the Apostle. The Lord had clearly told his disciples that they would be his witnesses to the ends of the earth, also to the Barak Valley. 
he also cautioned them that because of him, they, the disciples, would be hated by everyone, but the one who stands firm to the end will be saved. So our Lord asks us courage and perseverance in our faith. Paul and John were arrested by the priests and Sadducees for their teachings about Jesus and the healings that they performed in the name of the Lord. And in his reply, Paul boldly justified his acts, saying that he had done a good deed of a helpless man and that there is salvation in no one else except in Jesus Christ. Thus, the Apostle courageously testified to the Lord. He prayed that he may make known with boldness the mystery of the Gospel. May we too learn to be brave witnesses for the Lord, especially here in your midst in the Barak Valley. And the second reading, taken from the first letter of John, tells us the amazing love that God has for us, and at the same time urges us to love one another, since we are all, all children of God. We have come to know and to believe in the love God has for us. God is love. And he who abides in love abides in God. And God abides in him. So God's love for us is fundament, fundamental for our lives. It's essential. We need to graciously accept his love and share it with others. Love of neighbor, granted in the love of God, is first and foremost a responsibility for each individual member of the faithful. But it is a responsibility for the entire ecclesial community of, at every level, from the local community to the particular church of the diocese and to the universal church, the Catholic Church in the world. As a community, the church must practice love. We have to be really people of love. The Gospel reading taken from the evangelist John reveals Jesus as our unique means to salvation. He is the selfless, caring shepherd who gives protection and life itself. And he is the one gateway to eternal life. The task of Jesus to good, the good shepherd was to lay down his life for the sheep. Such was the need, the deed of Christ, who gave his life for everyone and therefore he is called Good Shepherd. We can recollect here the words of Prophet Ezekiel. For thus says the Lord God, Behold, I myself will search for my sheep, and I will seek them out. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep and I will make them lie down. Jesus calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. And the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. How comforting are the words of the responsible song we sang. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing 
I shall warn you. St. Augustine notes that it is certain that if there are good sheep, there are also good shepherds. In fact, it is from the sheep that good shepherds are derived. So I encourage you, as Catholics faithful of Barak Valley, to instill in your young boys and also in the girls the desire to serve God as priests or as nuns to give their life for God, especially to give good shepherds for the future of the church in Parag Valley. Let us take the example of Christ, the good shepherd, and show our love and compassion to those in our care. May the Blessed Virgin Mary inspire you to be always faithful, follow the Lord. And may Jesus Christ bless each and every one of you. Amen. always hears us with childlike confidence in his love let us submit our prayers to him saying Lord hear our prayer Entrusted to his care, we pray to the Lord. As you journey with your sheep every day, look kindly on them, on their steps. May the sheep ever follow the good shepherd to find nourishment and rest. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord.
sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty and Father. May the Lord sacrifice to your hands for the grace and glory of His name, for our good will of the Holy Spirit of the Church. Be pleased, O Lord, with our humble prayers and offerings, and since we have no merits to plead our cause, Come, we pray, to our rescue, with the protection of your mercy, through Christ our Lord. Amen. With you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift your hearts to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation, that when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all his at last made manifest, we, who watch for that day, may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so, with all the angels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to be setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit and graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of our, your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and, while, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection, the ascension to heaven, 
And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and with blessed Joseph, her spouse, and with your blessed apostles and the glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for your unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope, Stephen our Bishop, and today we pray in a special way for our apostolic nuncio, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. To Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those against us, and he has not in condition, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let's offer each other the sign of peace. Come, ladies, sins of the world.
have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Now the Holy Communion will be brought to your respective places. I request only the Catholics to come forward who have received the Holy Communion. Others, please be seated in your respective place and pray. spiritual nourishment, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that through our partaking in these mysteries, you may teach us to judge wisely the things of earth and hold firm to the things of heaven. Through Christ our Lord.
Before the final blessing, uh, allow me to thank uh, all of you for your uh, participation in this Eucharistic celebration. I see that you are uh, very numerous here, uh, gathering uh, in the occasion of my visit uh, to the Diocese of Isol. And uh, I'm very glad to see you so numerous and uh, I take this opportunity to convey to you the greetings and the special blessings of Pope Francis. I would like to thank your bishop, Bishop Stephen, for welcoming me on behalf of all of you in, in this diocese and be assured also of my prayers. I think that the God, when created the universe, had a special attention to the Barak Valley. So, it puts in this valley the beauty and the goodness. The beauty in your environment, in the magnificent nature you have, and the goodness in your heart. So please respect always the beauty of your nature, of your environment. And also show us, show always the goodness of your heart. And for showing the goodness of your heart, you have to live together in fraternity, in God's love. Journey, as you said in the placard, journey together uh, in communion, participation, with a mission. The mission to be together, uh, brothers and sisters in God, irrespective of uh, tribes, languages, and beliefs also. We are all brothers and sisters, especially here in Barak Valley. So, with these wishes, I would like also to convey to you the blessing of Pope Francis. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May the Almighty and merciful God, by whose grace you have placed your faith in the first coming of his only begotten Son, and earn for his coming again, sanctify you by the radiance of Christ Advent and enrich you with his blessing. Amen. As you run the race of this present life, may he make you firm in faith, joyful in hope, and active in charity. Amen. So that rejoicing now with devotion as the Redeemer's coming in the flesh you may be endowed with the rich reward of eternal life when he comes again in majesty. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Dear brothers and sisters, now we shall have a photo with Nuncio, with all the priests. Thereafter, the celebrants will go to the visitor's room for unvesting. I request all the faithful, after the final hymn, be to be seated in your respective places. And the felicitation program will begin in 10 minutes.